The next afternoon the elder Bhikshu again came to see Pani's wealth. The prince was eager to ask him many questions. His attempts to question the little Bhikshu to find out the details were unsuccessful. Sir! Gurudev will tell you everything was the same response over and over again. When Gurudeva came, Prince! How is the body now? He asked. Sir, the body bothers me so much. Why are you lying down like a zombie? Get up and run. Get on a horse. Jump in a river and swim. Fight an elephant. Don't just lie down, says. The stomach is also very active. All the food the little Piksha brought and gave me was not enough. Acharya! I can't believe that I have been in such a state of indigestion all these days. Your medicine has worked so wonderfully. Said Pani Selvan. Sir! You shouldn't trust your body too much. It's the same when the spell clears, I was a little careless, and if the spell comes a second time, it will be life-threatening. Lord! I am not so much afraid of the danger to my life. You're not worried, that's right. But do you know how worried millions of people in this Chola country have been for the last fortnight? All the cities and towns of the country are in a state of disarray. From the little children to the old, they are shedding tears. Sir! I don't understand anything you are saying. Why should people be so upset? Perhaps because of the thought that I will not survive this Suram? Why should people worry when they know that they are treating me at Sudamani Viharam? Prince! The people do not know that they are Surams and that they are from Sudamani Viharam. If the Mandars of this city had known about it, would there have been so much peace in this Viharam? Would not all the people have broken down all the walls and come here to see them? That morning when the news came that they had drowned in the sea, the Mandars of this city if they had heard the clamor and clamor, why was there no one inside this Vihara who did not burst into tears that morning? Pani Selvan sat up on the bed and said, Gurudev! What do you mean by this? I do not understand anything. Did the news come that I had drowned in the sea? When did it come? Who brought such terrible news? Why? He asked. Who brought them, I don't know. One morning the news spread all over the city. People were talking that the ship that had brought them from Sri Lanka to Kadakare had been caught in a whirlwind and drowned. The news spread widely that no matter how much the police officer searched for them, not even their bodies were found, so they must have drowned in the sea. After hearing that, I too was standing at the door of this Viharam and was saddened. Then another picture came and informed me that a boat carrying the patient had arrived in the canal behind the Viharam. I immediately came and saw that the patient in the boat was them. Then we had been treating them for three days. They remembered only yesterday. Master! Who brought me in the boat? Can you tell me? A young man and a young woman came pushing a boat. Yes, yes, even I remember it as if I had seen it in a dream. Do you know who the young man and the young woman were? Was the young man from the Vanara clan? No. Sir. He said his name was Sendan Amuthan. He seemed to be a devotee of Shiva. I didn't know the girl's name. Tika was strong and soulful. I can guess who he is. O Dakara Pungazali, daughter of Tyaga Vidangar. Didn't you tell me why they brought me here? No. Prince. I didn't even ask them about it. Didn't you let anyone know I was safe here? No, sir. Those who brought them told them not to tell anyone. I also thought it better not to tell because of their physical condition. Acharya! There is some conspiracy in this. My father Mamyudi Shola Maharaja had ordered me to be imprisoned. Accordingly, I left Sri Lanka. Some incidents happened in between. It seems that this conspiracy was made to accuse me of going against the Emperor's order. They have made up a story that I drowned in the sea and died. Guru Deva! Your acceptance of me in this Sudamani Vihara is treasonous. To keep it is a heinous crime. Send me to Tanjavur at once. Prince! If I receive royal punishment for giving them a place, I will gladly accept it. 
there is no harm in demolishing this ancient Sudamani Viharam and burying it with dust for the sake of it. I rejoice at your mercy, Gurudev. But how did you accept me without asking anything from those who brought me? What is the need to inquire? What higher duty can Bhikkhus like me have than to welcome those who have arrived with heavy sura? And their abbot, Kuntavadevi, has already informed me that they may come here and stay for a few days. Oh! So! Younger Bratia had sent so and so? When? A few days before they came here. Santhane Mudan, who brought them, said it was young Bratty's wish. Guru Deva! Have the two men who brought me gone back immediately? Can they be found? At least I want to know some details if I see them. Sir! Don't worry. Both of them are in this city. They come once a day to inquire about their health. We'll see if anything comes so far today. At that time the little Piksha came and looked at Guru Deva and signaled something. Acharya Piksha said, Here I am, sir. He said that and went out. When he came back after a while he found that Prince Arulma's Hivarman's agitation had increased. Acharya! I can't stay here for a moment longer. I don't want to take the blame for coming here and hiding in defiance of the Emperor's orders. I don't want to cause any harm to this ancient Sudamani Vihara, said the Prince. The great picture said with a flushed face, Indeed I cannot bear such a heavy responsibility any longer. I do not wish to keep them here for a moment against their will. They may depart this very moment. The boat is ready in the canal. Said. Where to go? That is a matter for you to decide. The two who brought you here have come to fetch you with the boat. The prince hesitated a little. Acharya saw a mysterious smile on Piksha's face and asked, Could there be any more intrigue? He wondered. Are they both back? Didn't you say why? They said. About an hour's distance from this Viharam, on the bank of the canal, there is a Nandi Mandapam. In it two ladies are waiting to come and see themselves. The prince hurriedly got out of bed. Master! Take me to the boat at once. It is so late, he said. Piksha took the prince by the hand and went to the bank of the canal. But the prince's gate showed no sign of being tormented by the cold for more than four days. Both Santhane Muthan and Pungazali's faces blossomed when they saw Pani's Selvan coming majestically. When Arulma's Hivarman boarded the boat and sat down, the Bhikshu looked at him and said, Sir! All the Bhikkhus of Sudamani Viharat will consider it a great blessing if we get a chance to serve you. It is good for you to come back here and stay for a week and get sick. Said. O oh Guru! I too feel that I will return. Otherwise I would not have left in haste without telling the other Bhikkhus thus. Said the prince. When the boat started moving, Santhan and Pungazali looked at each other alternately and said, When you brought me through this canal, I thought that you were from the world and that you were going to take me to heaven. You have deceived me. You have taken me to the Sanyasi math. Let me go. I have forgotten everything that has happened since I swam in the sea and lost my memory. I want to ask. Before that, tell me who are waiting for me in Nandi Mandapam, said the prince. Although Arulmas Hivarman looked at both of them and asked, Bungazali did not open his mouth. Santhane Muthan replied. He informed that Kundave Prati and the princess of Kajumbalar had come to Anamangalam and were waiting at the Nandi Mandapam there. Aha! Why has Ilya Prati brought that girl who faints at everything she takes? Santhane Muthan said, Sir. There is now a rumor spreading among the women of Tamil Nadu. They are saying that they are going to leave the holy Saivism and join Buddhism and become Pikhunas. Who, who is saying that? The princess of Kajumbalar is saying so. Here is this woman saying so. Just two people, Amuda. So Saivism will not suffer. I know many monasteries in Sri Lanka where Bhikkhunas lead an ascetic life. If necessary, I will take them and join them. Pani Selvan said that Santhane Muthan laughed. Then Santhane Muthan narrated to the best of his knowledge all that had happened since the prince and Vandiyadeva came ashore from the sea. 
Pawnee Selvan listened with interest and also brought his memories together. That's Nandi Mandapam. When the flower said that, the prince looked in the direction she pointed.